Hello beautiful family, it's Stephen here, Wednesday the 17th of August in the year 2022 and if you are new to this channel I am a street preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm a preacher of the way that leads to everlasting life and your name written in heaven and a place in heaven because the Bible tells us that we have all sinned and we all fall short of the glory of God. And if any man says that he has no sin, he deceives himself. And the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God, which God wants to give everyone, according to his holy word in the Bible, is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And if you believe the gospel of Jesus Christ in your hearts and call upon him, you'll be saved. The gospel is that Jesus died for all our sins according to the scriptures and he was buried and he rose again from the dead on the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. And if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus or if you confess Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart, that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's how simple it is. For by grace are we saved, through faith, and that not of ourselves, it is the free gift of God, not of works, not by our own good works, lest any man should boast. So it's a free gift which God wants to give everyone. Uh, it's nothing you can earn, you can't, you can't be good enough um, to earn this gift. You don't, we, don't, we don't get to heaven, make it into the kingdom of heaven by being good. Only, we, we are only justified by our faith, not by our works. So the moment you believe that Jesus died on the cross for all your sin and he rose again from the dead, God will baptize you in Holy Spirit. You'll be born again, born of God. You'll be saved, sealed, and sanctified and justified with everlasting life, with a one-way ticket to heaven. So if you haven't believed already, please believe now, because all those things might seem all right where you are, they are where I am, uh, th things are just going on as normal. Well, Jesus did say, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, um, and they, get, uh, they, they married wives and were given in marriage right up until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew it not, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Even so shall it be when the Son of Man is revealed. So, it's, everybody's carrying on as normal, life as normal, days of Noah. Um, most people don't believe, days of Noah. Um, so, and we're expecting him. Most, most Christians which are watching around the world, Christians who are awake, spiritually awake can see by they can see the prophecies jumping off the off the pages of the bible they really are and not only that we can just see all these things happening around the world and we can see that this world is being destroyed it's dying and uh you need to get onto the Ark of Salvation. Jesus Christ is the Ark of Salvation. Get onto the Ark now while you can. Don't wait until you witness all Christians vanish, all little children and babies which are innocent. They'll be taken up because they're innocent. I'm not sure about all children because God did, Jesus talked about children of the devil so. I'm not sure about that, but I guess babies and definitely. Tell me what you think in the comments about that. 
um, because some little children are evil little things they are they really are um, so so tell me what you think about that but um, don't wait don't wait until you witness this ha happening um, because sudden bedlam will erupt on the rapture taking place sudden bedlam chaos and and um, just basic anarchy basically will happen and the Bible says sudden destruction shall come upon this world sudden destruction shall come upon them and they shall not escape um, and then people will enter into what Jesus described as the great tribulation um, revelation Revelation means the revealing of God's uh, judgments and his wrath against this uh, world which has turned its back on him, which refuses to repent and believe, refuses to, you know, acknowledge him who made us. So God is going to pour out his righteous wrath and judgments upon this world, which has basically, as a whole, turned its back on him. And you don't want to be here for what's coming up on this world because it's going to be a living nightmare. It really is. It's going to be, uh, well, the four riders of the apocalypse mentioned in Revelation. The first is believed to be the Antichrist. The second is war. World war, the likes of which this world has never seen before. And if you look around the world and look what's going on with China, Taiwan, Russia, obviously, and Ukraine. Just look at what's going on around the world. That there are wars happening now. There's rumors of wars. Jesus said, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. This will be the third world war. Um, which the body of Christ is not appointed for. We are not appointed for this period called the Great Tribulation. We are, we are not appointed to God's wrath. And the, the Tribulation is not for the church. It's Jacob's trouble. And we are spiritual Israel. It's Daniel's 70th week. I quite like using that word apocalypse because most people... Um, when they think of apocalypse, they think of end of the world, and it doesn't actually mean that. It just simply means the revealing, the revealing of God's judgments and wrath. But um, we use it as a way of speaking about the, the end of the world. Well, well, it's going to be so terrible. I mean, you just think about it. It's, how long is it since we've had uh, a war? Let's think, uh, 46, uh, was it about, about 70, 80 years? Something like that, 80 years? And um, that's quite a long time to go without a world war these days. Well, in this last century. So um, they're gonna start a war. They're gonna start this war and um, I know that hundreds of millions of people will die in this war. So you don't want to be left behind to face all this. I mean, you can, you can say, nah, I'm not believing. But if, you, if you're still alive, when this great vanishing happens and, and that alone doesn't kill you, you will still be able to be saved but you must not take the mark of the beast in your right hand or in your forehead because they've got it all set to go. Some sort of digital ID that'll probably link you up to a, a huge quantum computer database, I don't know, um, something like that. And they'll know your thoughts, they'll know everything about you, wherever you go in, with this mark of the beast technology and and I, I preach it in the streets and people laugh at it when 
when they're using microchips and implants and all that now, now. So, it's, it's you know, and I, I try to explain in the streets. I don't just say the mark of the beast. Uh, I, I, I explain that this is some form of technology used to buy and sell because cash will be done away with. I, pro probably when we are when we are raptured up I'm pretty sure cash will be done away with then um, or it might be before but it's going to be done away with soon and the only way to sell and buy, buy anything the only way to go into the shop buy your food the only way to fill up your um, uh, pickup truck with gasoline will be to take the mark of the be beast during the great tribulation but everybody who takes that mark will be cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death. So the best thing to do is get saved now and don't wait until you witness all these people vanishing. Because um, we as Christians are looking for our blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. That's Titus 2.13 Who shall descend from heaven with a shout With the voice of the archangel And with the trumpet of God And the dead in Christ shall rise first And then we which are alive and remain Shall be caught up together with them in the clouds To meet the Lord in the air And so shall we ever be with the Lord I can't wait And I know most of you Well all of you probably uh, are feeling the same because the spiritual attacks are just ramped up ramped up even more I, I, I got attacked in the night uh, but I don't want to I don't want to give Satan any glory about it you know I just prayed I was healed and I, I went back to sleep um, but Maybe I should have prayed before I go to bed. I normally do see, but I was just so tired. I was just absolutely exhausted. I literally um, had a qu quick call, half an hour call, and then I uh, made something to eat, and boom, I was in bed. Um, probably about half nine, ten o'clock, because I was so tired. Um, because it is tiring. It's, ti it's tiring doing what I do. Um, it's the travelling, it's the, I mean, you just try 20 minutes non-stop talking on a microphone and it's hard work and then you've, you, it's hard work on your mind more than anything and you're having to face all these people, people are deliberately being sent by the devil to just come into your face and try to distract you and um People are sent by the devil to tell you to turn it off. And I'll tell you something, guys. It seems to be getting harder to preach out there. And, um, and I need somebody to come with me, really. If anybody is willing to come with me and hand out gospel tracts um, up here, preferably, um, anywhere in, in uh, Yorkshire, really, uh, West Yorkshire, South Yorkshire. If anybody's willing to come with me um, and hand out gospel tracts, then I would pay your train fare, travel fare, get your coffees and some to eat. And if I've got spare money, I'd also give you some something for 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 doing it. Um, because the worker is worthy of his hire, you know? So I would give you something for it, but I'd, I, I would like somebody to come with me because uh, um, it's, it's, getting, it's getting more dangerous out there. Um, it's more dangerous in the US than it is here. I'm gonna go this way because it's quieter. Uh, it's more dangerous in the US than it is here because we, we have a law here um, that comes from a book called the Magna Carta and it still stands to this day 
and it's right I think it's in the first paragraph or second of this Magna Carta that talks about it will always be legal for men to be able to voice the gospel in the streets so this is where the law comes from we've got that law in in this uh, in this country but I do know one thing um, they're trying to get a law passed in this country uh, that would ban Christians just Christians as far as I know from using amplification um, on the streets so that's not good so I just pray right now dear loving Heavenly Father that you will not allow that order to be passed at least not until we're away Dear Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, please answer that prayer, Lord. And I will be able to go out and all the rest of the people will go out and, and Lord, we'll be able to um, preach the gospel with amplification right up until you come. Lord Jesus, I pray in your name. Amen. So, so yeah, that's what they're trying to get past. Um, I, I can't understand what... I'm pretty sure somebody talked, the person who told me, they showed me the document. Um, I, I just, uh, can't, why, why only Christians? There'll be an absolute uproar about this, the will. Um, why Christians? You know, it's all right for people to go down the street and, and on, on floats, all dancing half naked and blasting out gay pride you know or often the Muslims to do what they want to do um, but, but Christians it's because it's the truth it's the truth Jesus Christ said I am the way the truth and the life no man comes to the Father the Father is in heaven no man comes to the Father but by me, Jesus said. So nobody's going to heaven any other way but through Jesus Christ, who said, I am the door. By me, if any man shall enter and he shall be saved. Do you know what, guys? Another thing I, I've, I've noticed lately, because Jesus hasn't come yet, people, a lot of people have lost heart. And they're starting looking into um, these new teachings heretical teachings i'm just sticking with the the same teaching which i've studied i studied i spent a lot of time during that first lockdown studying the pre-tribulation rapture more thoroughly and i found all sorts of little nug nuggets um pointing to a pre-tribulation rapture i should have written them down really but um I, I've come to the conclusion that yes, we, we must be removed before this period takes place. Um, anyway, uh, I, I believe this, that the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is at hand. I, I, I don't believe we've got more than four or five weeks maximum. That's just me saying that. It, it, it might be longer than that. I doubt it. I doubt it. Judging by the way things are going in the, in the world. And I hope it's not more than that. It could be today. I hope it is. I really do. And people always say, well, there's still people that need to be get saved. But at whatever time Jesus comes, there's going to be people that still need saving. So just think about that. Um, don't forget that great multitude which no man can number which come out of great tribulation washing their robes in the blood of the Lamb well we're already washed in the blood of the Lamb so that's another pre-tribulation uh, teaching there because we're already washed in the blood of the Lamb um, they get they wash their robes in the blood of the Lamb during the tribulation. Or maybe it's not a pre-tribulation thing, but if you see what I mean anyway. When you believe on Jesus Christ, it is, it is your past, present, future, your lifetime of sin. 
is removed from as far as the east is from the west, blotted out, never to be remembered again. But th that doesn't give us a license to sin. Sin does have consequences. And um, God, God is quick to forgive sin straight away. As soon as you acknowledge it, he will forgive you. But there can be consequences like, um, you know, you go out and you get drunk and uh, you wake up the next morning and you say, oh, sorry, Lord, I'm so sorry. And he's, he's saying, I forgive you, my son, forget it. But you've got, you've got a lousy headache and you look in your purse or your wallet and you think, flipping heck, did I really spend that, that $50, $100 last night? You know, the consequences. You know, so, and that there are potential losing of rewards, I would say, uh, when we get to the judgment seat of Jesus Christ. I can't wait for that day. I can't wait. I can't wait to see the Lord's face, beautiful face, shining on us. I can't wait to be with you all in total peace, no troubles just everlasting joy upon our heads no more worries no more bills <laughs> just in a brand new body for this corruptible body will be changed at the rapture Jesus will descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God that voice or the shout or the trumpet or all three um, are gonna have the frequency of that trumpet or the shout it's gonna have some effect upon ho Holy Spirit inside us and it's gonna transform our bodies into glorified bodies like Jesus own in other words we'll never die never feel pain never feel sorrow and uh, then we will come back with Jesus at the end of the seven year tribulation on white horses and battle in Armageddon. We will be doing the battling as far as I know. Um, if anybody thinks different, um, tell me in the comment section. But if, if somebody just mentions that the church has to go through the tribulation, I'm just removing the comments. I'm not telling you why or all this, or I'm not going into debate with you about it. I haven't got time. Um, or if somebody says you can lose your salvation, all this lot, I'll remove that comment because I don't want people coming to the channel and seeing all this stuff, all these complications, when God has made it so simple. He's made it so simple for the whole world to, to be saved. And it comes just by believing. One thing, believe. You believe once unto salvation. And then afterwards you, 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 you might repent with godly sorrow over something that you were doing, like, like you're smoking cannabis or something. So you repent, you change your mind and you think, right, I'm not, not doing that anymore because it's grieving Holy Spirit or... You know, I'm not having a go at you, Ed, by the way, you who, if any of you do smoke it. Not at all. Not at all. I don't judge you at all. How, how could I judge, judge you when I smoked it on and off since I was, a, since I was 15 years old? Um, anyway, guys, uh, flipping neck, 25 minutes this video. I just think the longer the video is, the longer it takes to upload, but I just wanted to ask if anybody would want to come with me. You don't have to stand right next to me as I'm, uh, you know, shouting out the gospel. You can stand further up the street, not, not too far away from me, but, you know, um, if, 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 it, um, if that would bother you, but it would help if I had somebody with me because... Look, look at this, I, I put these on here and they try and rip them off. Uh, anyway, 
yeah, I just need somebody with me because it, it just, we're, we're the body of Christ and we function better when we're together. And I'm on my own and I find it really, really hard. I'm not on my own, I've got Jesus Christ and I ask him for the angels of God and they're with me. But you need somebody, you know, you can see and hear and talk to, uh, you know, who's in the physical realm, who's part of you. Well, because the Bible says we're all members of one another. So I need another member of the body of Christ to come with me. That, that way, we both, we both boost each other's morale, you know? And um, it's just much better. It's just much more better. Safer. It's safer as well. Because, uh, because you've, got, you've got another witness. Because if something happens on camera and the camera gets damaged and they can't retrieve what was on it, you know, then I've got no witness. So, but yesterday, oh my gosh. Just, I just felt this heavy oppression upon my head. It was, it was really heavy, it was, but, but by my faith, I was managing to just keep going. And um, I could have gone on a bit longer, but, but I was too hot. I felt really uncomfortable. I got talking to this uh, lovely man called John um, from uh, a church there and he was giving out gospel tracts and he came and and he cheered me up, he was so friendly this black guy was so so friendly and and uh, just full of Holy Spirit and uh, he, he put me at peace a lot and there's quite a few people actually yesterday I mean yesterday was the day that I gave out the most Bibles than I've ever given out so I'm just going home now to order some more but for tomorrow so I have to pay extra for them to be delivered uh, next day uh, to delivery but I want them uh, tomorrow ASAP um, and uh, so I've just got them for whenever I go out next which might be tomorrow could be tomorrow if I've got enough I'm going out tomorrow after I've bought the Bibles I yeah. Uh, after I've bought the Bibles, um, I, should, I should still have enough to travel somewhere. But think about it, if you're, if you're in anywhere in North Yorkshire or West Yorkshire and you would like to come and, uh, come and uh, travel with me, then please just leave a comment. Leave a comment anyway if you can. Um, about anything you want um, and I just pray dear loving Heavenly Father that you bless everybody Lord I pray you will be glorified in the name of Jesus be glorified in them be glorified through this message especially your words in the name of Jesus bless them with the blessing of the Lord that makes rich keep them in the name of Jesus in your perfect love which casts out all fears Make your face shine upon them and be gracious unto them, Lord. Deliver them out of trouble. Um, lift up the strength, the health and beauty of your countenance, O oh, oh God Most High, upon them and give them peace in the name of Jesus Christ. Protect, protect them. Break any witchcraft coming against them in the name of Jesus Christ. Make them bold. Make them strong and courageous and make them not to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord God, I pray you pour out your power into each and everyone watching and meet their needs. Heal them if they're sick. Strengthen their hearts to the glory of your name, Abba Father, in your name, Jesus. Amen. Right, guys, I'm going to get off. I love you very much. Jesus loves you more. Just remember that the things which seem impossible with us, well, Jesus said, the things that are impossible with men are possible with God. So just remember that. Remember that the one who's in you, that is Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, is greater than the one that's in the world. 
Satan and his minions. Remember that. Just remember that. Behold, I am the Lord. Is there anything too hard for me? Just remember that, that he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Just remember that every prayer, he is able to do more than what you're asking. Exceeding abundantly above all that you're asking. I'm, pre I'm preaching to myself here as well. Just reminding myself of that as well. Have some faith, put on the whole armour of God. Make sure you've got the shield of faith on to, to stop all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Pray Psalm 91 before you go to bed. And Psalm 34, the angel of the Lord en encampeth round about them that fears him and delivers them. Oh Lord, somebody, maybe people have, have, have got anxieties and depressions. Lord, I pray you would lift that off them today and give them rest from anxiety and give them great peace and comfort and loving kindnesses and tender mercies in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, to your glory. Amen. So, guys, I love you. I love you loads. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you. Some of you say that you pray for me every day. Do you know what? I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. Because I don't get that much fellowship. Tomorrow I'm, I, sh I should be going to a Bible study. Um, if I'm not going preaching, I, I should really go to this Bible study because it's the only fellowship I'm getting, uh, you know, one, one on one. Apart from when I go and see Sister Andrea um, or Sister Karina in town. It's, it's really just like. Hit and, hit and miss the fellowship that I get. I mean, this is a form of fellowship, but it's not. It's not the same as meeting in person. So try and find somebody if you haven't. If you're, if you're walking alone, this Christian walk, you're not supposed to walk alone. You're supposed to be with other believers. The Bible says in, in uh, uh, Hebrews, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the man, manner of some. Um, so, you know, arrange, arrange to, to meet up in each other's houses as they did in the early first days. All right, I'm, I'm just gonna get off now because otherwise this video is just gonna be just way too long. My gosh, 32 minutes. All right, guys, uh, I love you very much. The, the sea's down there, you can just see it if I, wow, this zoom is, is amazing. It's, it's, it's much better than the old Zoom on the old camera. Anyway, I love you. Jesus loves you even more. Even more. Remember, he is, he is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. Remember, he's not angry with you. He might be grieved with something that you're doing, but he's never angry with his child and you're his children. You'll always be his children, no matter what age you are. So God bless you guys. I'm off now. Bye. Hopefully I'll see you up there very, very, very soon.